Hey all, welcome back. Today we will be solving Python OPP2 practice series question number one. And this is our question. So the question says, you are given a CSV file with the following column. The column names are ID, name, gender, reason, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. These Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 are nothing but the sales figure for each of the quarters. So each quarter basically means four months cap, okay? And rest of things are pretty self-explanatory. And each each row in the file except the header represents the records of a sales representative. So whoever had sold that product, his details are given in that particular CSV file. I will be showing you that. Just hang on. And the variable name is file name which contains the location or the path of that particular CSV file. So our task is mainly to define a function named consistent sales increase which will take file name as an argument and return the name of the reason with the highest count of representative whose sales figures are constantly increasing across quarters. That is Q1 less than Q2 less than Q3 and less than Q4. So basically each time their sales are increasing every quarter. So first can be like 100 then 200 then 300 then 400. But it can't be like 100, 500, 200 and 800. So in that case, there is a gap. It is not constantly increasing. So in that particular case, apart from that, there is also edge case. If none of the representative have this kind of behavior that their sales are constantly increasing across quarters for their region. In that case also, we need to handle the output. So apart from this, we are also given a template code which we have to use to write our function. So again, this is called a doc string where you need to focus on what are the arguments. So it's file name that is an str and it returns also an str that is a string and which is the name of the reason with the highest count of such representatives. Now, once we have understood this, now let's make thing clear by understanding the CSV file itself. So you can see that this is my CSV file, right? We have ID, name, gender, reason, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. And here you can see that suppose for North, our sales representative name is Amit, his gender is male, reason is North, then our quarter one results are like 100, quarter two, 200, quarter three, 300, and quarter four, 400. By the way, these are all in millions, okay? Similarly for all other cases, so you have to just aggregate them and solve that particular question. So now I will be showing you two approaches to solve this problem. One is the hard way where we will not be using any library or anything like that just pure fundamental of the python and another i will be using pandas so in the comments do let me know which one you found interesting easy and would like me to continue with that approach we will cover that in the future videos okay so let's start approach one so here I would suggest to you that while I am coding, please code along with me. And also, if you are not sure how to write function, you can watch my video as well as you can just write your code and then convert it to function. But since I already know what I have to do, I will directly be going through the function because the problem with using function is that you can't visualize your code or whatever you are doing. And I'm using Jupyter Notebook for this cause only. So that's the small disclaimer from here. And after that, let's now see the approach one which is the pure python approach so guys first of all we need to create a representation for the count as well as region so best way is to use a dictionary here because it will help us to easily iterate it so we will be doing that only so i will name that particular dict as reason count you can use whatever you want after that we will open our file now you might be thinking we have to use the file name no just use this particular file name itself because it will contain the path so that's why and also if you are having issue in like how I'm doing this you can watch my previous video where I have covered how to open a file how to do everything you can refer from there also so we will use context manager with open file name comma in the read mode there are many modes as you can see right but read mode is what we want because we just want to read the file and then we will do the analysis on ourselves if you will use any other mode then it might be a chance of override so that will cause an error so please make sure that you understand that as file 
lines is equal to file which is our file handler kind of a cursor there and it has a property of read lines so read lines will read the entire document as you can see returns a list of lines from the stream so whatever is there for each line there will be a element as list okay the problem with this is that if you see our file right here you can see that we have our first row as the name of the column so we need to handle that it doesn't take this so for that we need to skip this particular thing so since it is under lines and it is a list so we can remove that particular element or maybe we can skip it but here is how you have to do it in the normal cases so for line in line and where from where will we start we will not be starting from zero because that will contain our id so here and rest all now we will have to check the columns right and this columns basically will contain all the values as you can see so each line will be like this only right but we, what we can do is we can create a separate list and separate out the elements from here so that's what we are doing here also so columns is equal to line which is an iterator here dot strip that will remove all the trailing white spaces in case we have some issue and then split based on our comma so this will create a list okay now we need to extract the data because all the data is present in the columns when we want to work on those things right so for that we have to extract the data and for that we'll be extracting the mainly region so region is equal to columns and three now you might be wondering why i'm using three so remember guys that column is actually a list and it has this end Next thing right so if we go to our sales data what is our reason column 0 1 2 3 so that's why we are using this particular 3 okay and you might be wondering okay so that's for one column no that's not for one column because here we are using a iterator right so it will be going through all the lines in the files and storing in that way so for each of the list values that read lines will return it will take the column split it and then it will give us the third index which is the reason okay once we have done that now we need to also get our q1 q2 q3 q4 because that's the main criteria for our function right so we have to use tuple processing and this is how you will do it q1 q2 q3 q4 now you can't do it individually you have to use the map method so if you don't know what map is just refer anywhere online or in simple sense what it does it it takes a function and it maps onto all the values which are present here and it will be stored in q1 q2 q3 q4 so let me show you how to do that so int and then columns what are the index of this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so since last value is excluded we need to use the 8 so that we can get and simple ways to use from 4 is to rest right once we have done that we have our reason as well as our q1 q2 q3 q4 right so now we will check if sales is constantly increasing that is q1 q2 q3 q4 and update reason count dictionary based on that so for that we will simply write a simple if condition if q1 less than q2 less than q3 less than q4 okay and now we have to update if that particular reason is present if it is not present then we will create a new dictionary so first we will be updating the thing so update the count for the region and the way we are doing is we are going to check if that particular reason exists or not right so for reason in reason count which is our dictionary if it is already present then we will simply update it right so reason count and reason which is an iterator which will contain our reason plus equal to one so this is a shorthand notation to update the value this simply means that reason underscore count then reason plus one but here we are not using that just using plus equal to so this is a pythonic way to write plus okay now if it is not present that particular reason is not present in our reason count dictionary then we will have to create that particular key right so for that it's very simple reason count then reason then equal to one once you have done that now the final part comes is that we have to find the maximum value obviously you can do a maximum loop but i am going to show you a simple way to do this we can do is using max reason variable which will calculate the maximum value and it will have our dictionary 
apart from that it will also have our key because that is how on what basis we are doing so as per our condition it is name of the region with the highest count of such dependencies so so reason we need to take right so key is equal to reason count dot get so get will just give us the keys and then default if that is not present then no reason found obviously you can remove this particular thing okay you don't need to work on this but since uh, we are also handling the edge cases that's why i am writing it but always follow whatever is asked according to your question in interview or maybe in examination return max region now this completes our function completely now let's check if uh, we are actually getting what we want so for that i'm going to simply create a variable called file name is equal to my file name was csdata.csv and now i'm going to print the consistent cell increase function with the value file let's see what error we get so it says unbound local variable line reference before assign k so this will be line i was wondering it's like how error is not coming because in these cases mostly error will come so now as you can see that if i print it you can see it's not right and let's verify whether this answer is right or wrong okay so let's check so here 100 200 300 400 okay next 80 120 160 200 okay now any north again no now for east let's see 50 100 120 150 okay and east 100 130 250 and 300 so you can see that 250 is less than so the consistency fails here so that's why east is not there now let's for check for the west 90 70 100 150 200 200 now you can see that there is no increase here right it's strictly increasing it was saying so that's why west also not there uh south 150 180 200 250 and 90 80 130 140 so you can see that here again we have 80 and earlier we had 90 right so again a issue so that's why it not there so that means north is right now you can see that here we have to write a lot of code but it turns out that we can simplify it using a library called pandas and it will help you a lot in your examination or in an interview mostly they will ask you to do it using this only you don't have to do all these steps and you will see what i mean so let's move on to our approach two so guys this is approach two and in this approach we are going to use pandas library so those who don't know pandas please refer to any online resource and learn this particular library it's very important in today's data processing world and it can handle a large amount of data also it helps us in manipulating data very easily so now let's see how pandas makes our life very easy so first thing is we need to load our data right and data is stored in this particular path right so let's do that i will be using df variable and df stands for data frame data frame is nothing but an excel type sheet where you can use anything so excel and data frame are kind of similar so you can understand that uh, means like your work is going to be very simple now it has a uh, thing called read csv this is basically a method and it will take a path so a lot of things are there but you have to mainly focus on this path okay so file path is there so it is stored in file name so that's why i'm using file okay now here your data will be loaded in the data frame and if i just show you how data frame actually works it will be like this df dot pd dot read csv and then file okay and df dot head if i do that means it will display me the first five values so you can see that it's exactly excel right and you have to use this again for your use case and reason again but now let's see how it makes our life very easy okay so the way you are going to do is you are going to create a new column and you are going to filter out things so the new column that i will be making here is called consistent growth so consistent growth now some of you might be knowing this but if you don't know here this will create our column just think of it as a key that we are assigning to a dictionary if you want some analogy and now we are going to write a filter condition so filtering is basically again this if condition only but in pandas way we call it filtering conditions so filtering conditions we have to use this particular method make sure that you understand this okay so df which is our variable now it has this column name right so if we can create our column name like this can't we use the column name which is already present we can use that right so q1 and here things get interesting guys that keep on using df and it will check for all the values no loop no nothing okay so q2 and then we have to separate out the conditions so first condition is that q1 is less less than q2 and then we have to check out other so df of q2 is less than df of q3 that is quarter 3 and again we have to separate out 
df of q3 less than df of q4 and obviously you can do another one like df of q4 less than df of q1 but it doesn't make sense right so one thing to note here is that whenever you are using this particular thing separate it out with small brackets and it will only take two values as per my information obviously you can correct me in the comments if you think i am going wrong okay now after that we have to create a new data frame like we created here right so we are going to create a new data frame or a variable you can say so i will name it consistent underscore df is equal to df of df of consistent growth why because consistent growth is a column now which has all these filters and this will return true or false value only okay because they are conditions nothing else right so we are going to use that thing to filter our data frame and the easiest way to filter a data frame is simply to use the data frame pass in new column that you have created including the data frame itself so df of growth and you are done with your new df okay so if you are not sure what we are going to do here let me just show you you can see that consistent growth is true or false right so in that particular sense we have to do so now let's check for the reason count so reason count there are many ways to do that and the way we are going to do is we are going to use value count so for each category that we have in our reason we will be seeing how many values are there so for that we have a value count method which return us the unique count of all the values so for that this is consistent df then pass in the column name region then we will use value underscore counts once you have done that you have your reason count as a new data frame if i show you check this out print that you see right you can see that north has two south has one east has one right so in that particular sense it is there now we are going to check the most representative region which will be maximum only right because as per what we saw earlier we are going to use the maximum one so most representative reason is equal to just giving us back the id maximum values id so for that i will be using reason count has this particular property id max okay so this will return us the maximum id let me show you it also to you here so you can see that it returned me the id that is not earlier it was just showing me values as well as the reason name right so that is the thing now we just need to return the most representative reason so return most representative reason okay and we are done here so you can see that in just one two three four five six six lines of code your entire code has been completed however in the base case you had to use all these lines right so this is the benefit of pandas and obviously it might seem that uh, we haven't completed so let's just run the file again okay so no problem with that so again i'm going to copy it from here pasting it here and i hope that our file is okay i hope everything goes okay and you can see that output is not in case you also want to get the highest count for that we are going to do a little bit change here in the function and this is kind of an extra material so highest count again a variable and it will just give me the reason count dot max so max will return me the total count okay so again it will not be printed here because we are not printing it right now so now if i print this highest count and I do this 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 you can see that north has two and apparently our work was mostly completed here only when i did reason count dot value count so it returned me this right so here this we are using this particular reason to access this and the way we are accessing it is very simple for this one we are using id max because this is our id because reason we are using as id right because we are selecting reason and the count we are getting from the max method itself okay so i know that it might be a little bit hard if you don't know pandas but if you learn this it will be very easy for you to handle these type of questions obviously it will not be used everywhere as we will see in our third or second questions okay so guys with this we have come to an end of this particular session i have few things first please practice as much as you can take many variant of this question ask gpt to create new csv files like those and then you can practice more and more you can always ask queries in your comments that's for you only so please ask that what happens many people just watch the video and they don't ask so i understand that they know but they do very bad in examination or maybe in interview or anywhere else and 
they think that they have not done good actually that's not the case most of the time if you ask your queries you will get your response instantly and queries resolved fast apart from that if you're liking the video please hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon to stay notified and as well as share with others this video so that they also get benefit all the resources that is required to learn this particular pandas and the companion notebook will be provided in the description so with this i will take my leave till then bye bye see ya